debugging offloaded kernels on AMD GPUs. How exciting. Kernels cheer at once. So I'm just going to do a little um, preamble first, a couple of slides, and then get straight into the demo. Uh, I pre-recorded that, so it won't go wrong, I promise. Uh, that will last about 24 minutes, and then uh, I shall go over some uh, of the GCC-specific implementation notes that I gathered along the way. Um, just things of interest for those who care about such things. Uh, so. <clears throat> so about me, <laughs> I am Andrew Stubbs, hello. I uh, started at Code Sorcery uh, 13 years ago, and uh, then we were acquired by Mental Graphics, and now part of Siemens. So. Um, I still, I still have my old one though, so I don't have a Siemens top yet. We need to get that organized. Uh, but we're still doing the same old business. For those of you who know the name from years back, it's just uh, just different bosses. Uh, the um, uh, Most recently, I've been working on the AMD GCN backend, uh, which I, for which I am co-maintainer. I've uh, also been contributing to the OpenMP and OpenACC for both GCN and NVPTX, um, and uh, also the um, the Dwarf support for which we will be using in this demonstration. <coughs> that is the GCC's Dwarf support, not the GDB's Dwarf support. <coughs> That's um, the job of Rock GDB team. They are not in our team. This is developed by AMD as part of the Radiant Open Compute project. Uh, so they've taken the GDB and they have modified it so it can do heterogeneous debug. Uh, Tony, that's the name. Tony just talked about this on Monday, so you, if, if it's sounding familiar. Uh, it's basically, GDB allows you to see both x86 and GCN code in one session seamlessly and um, it's rather good. So, and we're going to demonstrate it. Uh, this works on, as far as I know, GCN5 GPUs upwards. Um, the, I mean, that may not, that may be oversimplistic, but I know it doesn't work on my GCN3 ones that I have. Uh, so that's the Vega models onwards. Um, if you install the Linux drivers to use the cards, um, uh, the Rockham drivers, then you get the debugger as standard. It's squirreled away under opt Rockham, but it's there. Uh, and you, you can get this for Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, and Suzy Enterprise, and probably other ones as well. But those are the ones that are officially supported by AMD and Rockham. Uh, these links take you to the uh, uh, the general, the generic Rockham page and the one specific to GDB if you wish to do further reading. Uh, the compiler I'm going to be demonstrating today is a development from the development branch, the OG11 development branch. Um, we have in, in better support for open ACC um, worker threads and um, and also the, the debug. Um, all of this stuff is in the process of being moved to GCC mainline. Um, the, uh, the patches are submitted and being reviewed or being re reworked. Um, if you wish to build the debug, the development branch yourself, the instructions for building any 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 compiler or any branch are there on the on the wiki. You have to go and build yourself an LLVM nine um, install first, um, because that's the uh, uh, the assembler and linker we use, and then you uh, and then you download the compiler and newlib and build and have fun. The, uh, if you want binaries, um, the last GCC 11 official releases are available in a couple of uh, Linux distributions. I'm aware of Ubuntu and Suzy. There might be one for Red Hat, but I don't have access to the package repo to have a look. Um, or easy access anyway. The, um, the, but those are not the development branch. Um, they won't have much of this debug stuff. The um, uh, hopefully the upcoming GCC twelve will have 
pretty much all of this stuff though, and then the official channels will have it. Uh, right, so onto the demonstration. Uh, here's one I made earlier. Um, external video. Now, th this isn't the most dynamic. I do apologize, um, but um, it should explain everything. Over to I past me. Four demos today, two simple ones, one each for OpenATC and OpenMP, and two more interesting ones for OpenATC and OpenMP. Uh, so let's get started on the first one. BI demo one. Here is our simple program. So this is the OpenACC example and it is a very simple program. It doesn't do anything useful or interesting other than confirm that our device uploading really is working. Uh, this section in the middle, lines 7 to 14, are designed to run on the device and the if statement checks to see whether it is on the device or whether it is running in host fallback mode. So on if it is find itself in host fallback mode this will return minus one and if it runs correctly it will return two uh, randomly chosen values nothing significant there. Right let's get to the um, compiling. So this is using the compiler from the OG40, um, OG11 branch of GCC de um, development. Uh, not live. The, some of these features are not in mainline just yet. It's very soon. So I have got open ACC mode. I'm going to disable optimization and turn on debug info and I'm going to switch to the GPU device that I actually have here which is a GFX 908 device. M01 is the source. Compile, done. Let's just check it works. V is 2 is the correct answer. So debug it. Rock GDB, A.out. I'm going to switch to TUI mode so that you can see what's going on better and because I like it. <clears throat> so here's our program, same as we just seen in the editor. I'm going to set a breakpoint on line 10, which is the first line in the device region, and a breakpoint on line 17, which is the first line on return to the host. If I do show you what the breakpoints look like, you can see that we have the host um, breakpoint there in main and the device breakpoint in main.ompfn0. Uh, this is because they appear to be as, as if it's a nested function within the main function, so it has a slightly different name. <coughs> okay, let's go ahead and run this thing. So we stopped on the breakpoint in the device. So at this point, GDB is interacting with the GPU and has paused the program running on the GPU processor through the Rockham drivers and, um, and whatever it is that AMD have done to work this magic. Now you'll notice that it stopped on thread three. Let's have a look what threads we have. We have thread one, which is the master thread that we started on in main, um, exactly as you'd expect. Thread two is an internal Rockham um, thread. I don't know what it does. It doesn't. We don't care about it. We can ignore it. Thread three is running on the GPU device and you can see that because it says AMD GPU here. We only have one thread running on the GPU in this example because there's no loops or anything. Obviously that's not going to be the normal case. 
Let's do info break once again and see if it looks any different. So now you can see that breakpoint one has two instances, 1.1 and 1.2. 1.1 is the one that we had before running on this host address, uh, running on, um, set on this host address. And 1.2 is the GPU um, instance of this function. And you can see that its address looks significantly different. And if we look at the program counter indicator on the TUI, we can see that it matches what was set. So we are definitely running on the GPU here. <coughs> If I switch to thread one, see what's going on over there. No stores available. We, are, where are we? Backtrace. We are deep down in some library code. Keep going, keep going. There we go. Frame eleven is main. Frame eleven. There we go. So, the main thread is effectively waiting patiently on this pragma. There's a bunch of um, libgomp and rockham stuff going on that you don't need to worry about but this thread is just set here waiting on this pragma for the device code to return if i disassemble here we can see that we have x3664 um, uh, machine code exactly as you would expect to see and if i switch back to thread three and backtrace here then you can see that just like running a thread on in, on on the host there's no no real history here it's just entered at the point it was told to enter we do have this artifact from a, um, a improperly terminated stack but um, we don't need to worry about that we just have the one function on, on this backtrace if I disassemble here, by magic, the Rockham GDB has detected that this function is running GCN code and has disassembled GCN code. You can also see that this is not function main, this is function main own BFN0, as expected. So, next, it's detected that it's not running on the device sorry, that it is running on the device, that is not running on host, and has chosen the else, else pass as we expected. This is single stepping the GPU code on the GPU. If I run the, if I find out what's in the V variable, it should be the original value, which is one, that's been passed in from the host to the device. Uh, if I do next again, and then check the value of V again, it is now set to two on the device, which is what it should be. Next, exits the exits from the device and hits the next breakpoint. If I do info threads, you can see that the thread the three has now vanished. And if I do uh, print v again, you can see that the host side value of v is now two because the value has been passed back from the device. So end of demo one. Okay. Clear demo two. So demo two is very similar, but this time for OpenMP, and it's simplified so there's less to look at. We don't have the conditional. Let's not type out that long command again. Let's just put it in. So it's demo two, and the f open ACC has changed to f open MP, but otherwise the same. <coughs> Compile, start the debugger, switch to TUI. So, there's our program. Let's set breakpoints on line 8 and line 12. Info breakpoints shows there they are set exactly as we would expect. So far the same as before. Run. We stopped on thread 3 on the line that we would expect and 
a backtrace shows exactly the same as before slightly different um, message that's just because of, uh, of, the, of the numbers that GDB happens to find but still one, uh, one use, useful item on the backtrace info threads ah we've got something new now where OpenACC just launched the one um, the one GPU thread we now have several more so we've got the one and two exactly as you'd expect and three is the same again it's got it's our main OMP FN0 but we now have threads four and five on this GOMP simple barrier weight and if I do more there's more and more and more and it goes up to 16. So we have what what's happened here is that OpenMP always launches a whole team and a team is in this instance has 16 threads only one of them is active the others other 15 threads uh, are all waiting just to be asked to do something which will never happen because there's there is nothing parallel in this example so let's just um, check the value of v it is one that was the value that was passed in next check it again there we go it's been set to two on the device next and it's exited the thread and if we do info threads it's you can see that um, all of those threads have vanished there's just the um, host threads left and the host side value of v is now set to 2 as it should be next demo this time a slightly more interesting open ACC program still pretty naughty but give it a go Compile, run the debugger, switch to TUI. Okay, so here's our program. So we have an array of 10,000 integers, which are uninitialized at the start. Uh, normally in a C program, that means that they'll be zeroed. Uh, and then we have an OpenACC parallel which copies the to, copies them into the device at the beginning and back to the host at the end and then we have an open etc loop which is set to distribute the loop across both gangs and workers the loop just sets the data to the value of the iteration counter so we should just end up with an array that is 0 1 2 3 4 5 and so on to 9999 Right, let's set our breakpoints on line 8 and line 11. So the entry to the device region and the first instruction back on the host. Run it. And it stops where you would expect. Info threads. Okay, so this time OpenACC has launched more than one thread, as you would hope. Um, we've got we've got um, gang, we've got gang zero, worker zero, gang zero, worker one, gang zero, worker two, up to gang zero, worker five. And the next page goes to goes as far as gang zero, worker seven and then on to gang one worker zero and at the bottom here we have gang two worker zero and if we keep going through there's quite a lot of them so let's just go fast so there are 3336 uh, workers in total in 417 gangs numbered zero to 416 and each gang has eight workers zero to seven so if we do ten thousand divided by three 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 six and make it floating point 
then we get there will be three, two or three iterations for each thread on this list to complete this array. So display display i. There we go. So we are on thread three, which is gang zero, worker zero. I guess that's the master thread, and that one got i equals zero, which is kind of what you would expect. Uh, let's do, let's iterate to the next round the loop then. N. That's the next. Oh wait, what's happened here? We've hit a breakpoint again, and I is now five thousand two hundred thirty-seven. Uh, next again. Oh, it's gone crazy. Um, seven seven zero nine, and we've hit the breakpoint again. Eight nine one zero, and there's the breakpoint again. I is my notifications have gone crazy. I do apologise. Uh, I shut this off. So we've we've got this problem. We keep hitting this breakpoint, and actually, this is expected because the breakpoint is set without any conditionality for thread. It's going to get hit as many, you know, three thousand three hundred and thirty-six times. So we need to do something different. Now, if you are familiar with thread debugging on GDB, you may be familiar with the scheduler locking feature. So, and we could indeed set the scheduler locker on and we could single step a thread and the other threads would just sit and do nothing. Uh, but on the GPU we have a problem because we have hardware synchronization instructions, the barrier instructions. And what happens is that if the hardware hits one of those and the other threads are not running, it will just sit there and wait. And what the, and the knock-on effect of that is that our program hard locks up and our uh, debugger locks up with it. And then we can't. And the only thing to do is to kill it from another terminal. So we're not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start with a fresh run, so that we're back at i equals zero, and I'm going to disable disable breakpoint one so it's not there anymore uh, it's there but it's not doing anything so if I say info breakpoint now you can see that enable n on breakpoint one so now if I do next we'll wait while the breakpoints run there we go i equals eight now you might have expected that i will be equal to one because it comes after zero but what's happening here is that the workers in gang zero are striding over this array so we get n equals zero n equals eight n equals 16 and that's three iterations so we should be done and indeed we are i equals 10,000 is the end of the loop so next next there we go we have exited So p data, print data, there we go, zero to a lot um, incrementally. We, uh, this is worked as expected. So quit there. The next demo is the same again, but this time for OpenMP, which has a few interesting variations. So this is the demo4 file, and I've changed it to fopenmp, but otherwise the same compile line. So, rot edb, a dot, no, a dot out, switch to 2e, here's our program, same idea, but this time we have open OMP target, pragma, it with a map, map does the same as the copy on OpenACC, so this is copying the data in at the beginning and out at the end, and we are going to create some teams, which will distribute across, distribute the loop iterations across the teams, and Parallel for means also distribute them across the threads in the teams. So let's set breakpoint on line eight, which has actually gone to ten, and 
break point on line 14 to catch the exit. In throw break point shows exactly what to expect, except now we have Fn1, not 0. This, this is one of the differences with open MP debugging. So if I run this and do a backtrace, you can see that OpenMP OMP FN1 has been called from Gump Parallel, which was in turn called from OMP FN0. This is because the dot zero is where the code for the whole team is. There wasn't any team specific code outside the loop in this case, so the only thing it did was to call the was to launch all the workers. Uh, they're not workers; it's not open ACC. Uh, to launch all the open MP um, teams um, threads within the team. Um, so the master one is shows up on our backtrace here as FN one, and FN one is where the thread specific code goes, which in this case is the contents of our loop. In info threads shows that we have a good number of threads as you would expect all of them stopped on this FN1 this time uh, so we have we have um, teams of 16 threads lots of them how many did we get we got 120 teams of 16 threads which makes 1920 uh, threads altogether Let's just see what one of the one of the slave threads is doing. So I'm going to switch to thread four. So you can see here that this is team zero, thread one. So this is the first slave thread. Uh, let's have a look backtrace. So here this, we're running in dot one as as expected, but this was called from gump thread start and and GCN enter kernel. These are libgump internal functions which were called from the original team startup code um, so these these were sitting in a pool just waiting to be told what to do and when the master thread um, sent them a, a function um, pointed to a call that's what they did um, so from the debugger point of view you just need to be aware that these things are running in a slightly different way to what they do with OpenACC. You get a different backtrace, but there's nothing, not a really big deal. Let's go back to uh, the master thread. And where were we at? We were looking at, uh, uh, at this iterations, weren't we? Uh, weren't we? So display i shows that i equals zero. So the master thread has once again got zero, which is good and 10,000 iterations divided by 1920 threads means that each one will iterate five or six times. Uh, mustn't forget disable breakpoint one or we're going to get the same problem again. Next. There we go, move to the next line. Now I had this dummy thing, and you may be wondering what this dummy thing is about. And this is a workaround for a problem, um, which is probably not specific to GPU debugging, but just debugging in general. That the entire contents of this function has ended uh, fn.1 has ended up on a single source line. And when you do next, the debugger is going to keep going until you get to a different source line, and that's going to take a very long time if there isn't a next. And it's basically it's going to run through all the iterations of the loop um, and then exit the thing because that's how the debug information is formed. So I put this dummy line in so that we have something to next over. That's all it's for. So next iteration, iteration two, i equals one. This one is not striding, you'll notice. This is good. This is just going to run through them one at a time. And there we go. We've run out of iterations. It was six like we thought it might be. We're into an internal function of libgump. No need to worry about that. Next again gets us, we've exited. So 
so we're done this is the finish we can check the data and it's written it correctly and sent it back to the host as we would like right then demo over thank you You are mute, With, Andrew. Oh, I, okay. Thank you. I was just saying thank you, past me, and then I was talking to, to, to nobody but me. So that was good. I guess past me could hear. Right. Moving on then. So, uh, as I was um, implementing the Dwarf support in GCC, there were some number of issues that came up. Um, I mean, obviously, we started out with just looking at the internals manual for all the dwarf related um, hooks and macros and implement those. And that actually worked with an old version of RockGDB quite well. Um, but then they implement, they updated their implementation to do things properly and it stopped working. And it only ever been limited anyway. So if you were listening to Tony talk on Monday, you know that they did a bunch of um, work on um dwarf extensions we haven't had to use any of those yet but um it, 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 there is some complications with the gpu the first one i'd like to mention is that it has weird register sizes it's a 64-bit architecture in the sense that the address is a 64-bit and it has 64-bit instructions and well, it has bigger than that in some cases and it has um uh you know the usual attributes that you might expect a 64-bit thing uh, uh, architecture to have, except that the app, that, that the the registers only have 32 bits each. Now, it's not a problem for the instruction set because you know it can use pairs of pairs of registers just fine. Um, but it was a problem for the dwarf representation, um, and we discovered that this is unique among all the architectures that GCC supports currently and therefore had to go and retrofit a whole bunch of stuff in the dwarf generation code to allow us to use the um dwarf expressions that um have multiple um you know for things that span multiple um registers the uh, normal normal variables it's absolutely fine the gcc can cope with things that span registers this is normal for larger types on many architectures but for the specifically for the stack pointer and the frame pointer there was a hard-coded built-in assumption that these things would be would fit in a register so we had to go through and fix all that and uh, dwarf itself kind of assumes the same thing it does provide expressions um uh to express that the, the, the register spanning but it um uh all of the shortcut ways don't work you have to use the full-on expression so that was an interesting project. Um, in the end, I ended up using um, C++ overloaded operators um, so as not to have to edit the too many places in the dwarf code. Uh, the code mostly looks like it did, but it actually does magic things behind the scenes. Um, the uh, next one is the early debug information. Um, so. The offload supporting GCC, unlike other compilers that do offloading, um, is built on top of the LTO um, structure. So there's just one parsing step, and then you know it streams out the internal representation, and then the offload compiler streams that in um, and does what it wants with it. Um, but it only gets a portion of the program code. It doesn't need all of the host program, only the offload bits. Um, and normally when you do LTO, what happens is, is that the uh, the LTO objects contain some debug uh, information pre-made. And then at the end of the LTO, when the compiler's generated the actual assembly code and knows where everything is, it generates the rest of the debug and then the two are put together by the linker. Um, this also works for offloading except for the fact that the early debug that comes with the the, the lto um representation is in x86 64 format um uh, the, for, you know, we only support that so far i mean i guess it's in host format 
Um, and so I ha we had to do some work in the MOOC offload uh, to help at all to uh, rewrite this. So it does binary editing. It uh, loads in the LTO object, extracts the ELF um, uh, sections that have the debug code, creates a new ELF that has the correct ELF headers on it, uh, and then goes through and converts all the relocation codes from x86-64 to AMD GCN. And then, there's, and then it weakens any references to symbols that may not exist because the early debug code contains a bunch of stuff that's not relevant and you end up with link errors, um, which is annoying. So we just weaken those and that just makes the problem go away. Um, so that was an interesting project. Um, this one, I believe, is committed upstream already. Both of these two are. Um, uh, you don't need the, don't need the um, uh, dev branch for that. Uh, this one, though, you do. This one is in, pro in progress. Uh, so as I said, you only get the program code um, for the bits that actually get offloaded. The offload compiler isn't expected to offload the whole program again. And this ends up with an interesting problem where the debug information ends up nested inside a host program function, but doesn't exist on the target. Uh, it does not no, no problem with this in terms of running the code. It's just a um, convenient organizational setup, but GDB said, ah, well, this function doesn't exist, therefore any debug information I have for it is completely irrelevant and just threw it all away and we got nothing. Uh, so I had to fix this on the uh, OG11 branch, and, but, uh, and it has been submitted upstream uh, for the main line, but uh, it was rejected. It wasn't, it wasn't the correct fix, or Abid already decided it wasn't before he did it. Anyway, Abbott is working on the proper solution for this. Um, um, so we, we will get there soon. We will definitely be in G, um, GCC uh, 12. And address spaces, this is one of the things that requires um, dwarf extensions that Tony presented. Uh, Last time I tried to implement this, I did actually come up with a patch that did it according to the specification, but GDB didn't support it, so I couldn't test it, so I haven't put it on the branch. Uh, Tony now tells me that the next major release of the Rock and, of Rock GDB will have support for this. Uh, no date for that yet, though. Um, so I shall be getting back to this at some point in the future. Um, but um, it needs address spaces because there are more than one memory uh there's more than one memory on the um on the device and uh they all all have you know addresses that start at zero or whatever but you need different instructions to access different memories and well gdb needs to know which one an address is in or it's going to get something that means is meaningless uh this is only a problem for gang private variables right now um you know you ask what the value of that is and it says uh i don't know <laughs> The, and then the next one is another of the extensions that are required is for getting pieces of vector registers. Uh, the GPU is interesting, is I mean, like, uh, in its different CPUs. In most CPUs that I've encountered, you get a full set, a complete set of instructions for scalars, and then you get a limited subset of stuff that you can do on vectors. And as long as you're inside that sort of stuff, which is mostly computational stuff, then you're fine. Uh, the GPU is the other way around. You get a full set of instructions um, for vector registers and a subset for scalar registers. So there are some operations that we can only do by putting the scalar in the bottom of a vector and setting the vector to a width of one and, uh, and uh, running the vector instruction. Uh, this happens quite a lot. Things get moved backwards and forwards between the register files. It's, it's an interesting thing. Um, but when you try and debug the program that's done this, GDB just, you know, you say, show me the value of V, and it says, and it gives you 64 bit wide vector because that because it's in a it's in it's in a vector register. Uh, 
and then if you try and do debugger expressions with that what you get is obviously nonsense i mean it doesn't work um so um we need to implement some of the proposed extensions to make that work for ordinary scalars and equally so for vector variables um, that are not 64 lanes wide and in general debugging vector code is hard which is why i didn't do it anyway uh, if you notice I, I set my my demo to gang and worker not to vector parallelism uh so questions what do you think questions shared loads notes are loading uh can you, oh, we've already answered that on the chat already. Uh, I don't know whether you can attach to a running program. I have never tried it. I mean, I've been I've been concentrating on trying to implement the debugger support, not um, not the debugger itself. Um, uh, Tony did say something about it on the chat. Let me respond back. Yeah, yeah, sorry, it it does, um, Andrew. Ah, okay, it does. Okay, good. Um, that'll be handy for next time it hangs up on me. I shall try that. Um, and you'll notice I also compiled everything with O0 um, because, as with anything, debugging optimized code is less well supported. Um, you also notice that the compiler is set to still use OpenMP parallelism even at O0 because it's important to be able to debug these things in parallel. Even though that seems like it's an optimization, it is enabled at O zero. Uh, anything else? Any other questions? Okay, nothing about this this one. Okay, well, I guess I'm just coming up to time anyway. So thank you, everybody. And uh, I believe my slides should be available on the page shortly, uh, if they're not already. And the video is not public on YouTube, but the URL is in the presentation.